Welcome to the Jobnik. Mr. Youssef, I'll cut to the chase. This is your book. It's a bestseller book in the New York Times. And the title is Son of Hamas, a uh, gripping account of uh, terror, betrayal, political intrigue, and unthinkable choices. One of the words caught my, uh, caught my uh, attention in particular, and that's the word uh, betrayal. There are those who accuse you of betraying Palestinians. Are they right? Are they wrong? What's the answer? Well, first of all, good evening to everyone, and thank you for having me. It's a great honor. Um, yes, this is my choice. Uh, I choose the world, betrayal, because um, the eve of publishing this book, I knew that my, my people would label me as a traitor. Uh, it's not like uh, I was uh, committing a crime and they cut me in the act, then this is my punishment. I walked away and I should not feel guilty about saving human lives because this is what I did. Now, if a majority of my society believe that saving a human life, stopping a suicide bomber from blowing up himself and killing many civilians in the process, if they think that this is okay, I don't have to think the same way. And if my punishment for saving a human life is to be shunned, to be accused of treason, and sentenced to death, then be it. They can say whatever, and, and traitor or treason, according who? Hamas? Well, how about the entire system will come down? Then what is it going to be? One individual against an entire society praising suicide bombing attacks? And if someone goes against it, the only weapon they have to just say that this is treason, anybody tries to get them out of their comfort and challenge their narrative to help them get out of the cave of delusion what we become, we become traitors. I knew what I was getting myself into and they can say whatever they want to say. It's their problem. I know what I am and I know who I am. It's interesting you used to... It's interesting you used the word choice. I've been studying human choice uh, for 30 years. I'm still not uh, sure do we have choice, do we make choices or not, but Perhaps what we can do is, we're not chosen where we're born, you were born um, wherever you were born, but we do choose, you did choose, and uh, how we cope with it, what we do with that. And speaking of where you were born and, and your childhood, can you tell us a little bit about, about your childhood and also more generally, how, what, what is it like to be uh, a child or, or a woman or a, a homosexual individual under Hamas rule? Or the last one you need to ask the homosexuals. <laughs> I don't know how it feels like for a homosexual in the Palestinian territories, but it's not acceptable, you know. Um, and uh, it's a very close society. Um, me as a child, I was uh, abused uh, by older people. I was beaten up. And of course, you know, I really avoid to talk about this. Uh, even in my book, you know, I honored my father, I honored my people. I did not want to insult them or uh, to make them look bad. But uh, today, I choose to make myself vulnerable. And unfortunately, you know, when you make yourself vulnerable, people think that you are weak, you know. So this is why I avoid to talk about this stuff. But the amount of violence that I had to witness, and I'm not the only one, you know, it was okay, and it's still okay to beat up a child. You know, they do it at schools, they do it in the mosque, in the homes, in the street. It's a very violent culture. 
And I don't mean, you know, to, uh, to make them look bad, but there is lots of abuse and there is lots of violence when it comes to children. And as a child of that region, you know, and unfortunately the children that we see today in Gaza and we see them everywhere suffering because of the poor decisions and the choices that the leadership is, is making, they don't have anyone to speak on their behalf. You know, many people here on the streets protesting and speak, advocating on behalf of the children, but they fail to condemn Hamas, the reason who's causing all this trouble. And now, nobody, ha nobody actually is advocating on behalf of those children because they cannot discern. They cannot see things for what they are. And as a child of that region, uh, somebody have to speak up or somebody has to speak up, ha has to stand up against those monsters. Otherwise, the cycle of violence will go for eternity. So it was not a nice childhood. And it's still not a nice childhood. Today, after 45 years, and I'm nothing but eyewitness. I'm not an expert on the thing. I did not come to the United States to publish books. I didn't think that you could make money out of books. I just wanted to speak on behalf of this continuing tragedy that the people, the leaders of what so-called revolution don't care for the children. You know, and if I was able to fight the good fight and just stay standing on my feet, this is too much. And who's fighting on behalf of the children if we keep empowering the predators, the criminals who have been using them for so long by the name of revolution and by the name of Palestine? Who cares about all the political entities? Let them go down to hell and let the people live. Let the children, this, the future of the children is what really matters. Not some hypothetical political entity everybody is fighting for. Who cares for another Arab country in the region if it doesn't take the children into consideration? I'm, I'm trying to think what uh, Sinwar would, would uh, how he would debate you. I don't like uh, um, role-playing uh, Sinwar and he's sitting in some... Uh, um, running around in some cellar, uh, saving himself. But uh, maybe Sinwar would say, well, why are you saying this? We, we are fighting for the freedom, the dignity, uh, the independence, the national independence of these children. We are fighting to give these children a, a future. How is it that uh, we are um, abusing them? How is it that, uh, or Hania in, where is he, in Qatar? or some professors in universities? What, what am I missing? Look, this is the game of the con artists who came throughout what's so-called the Palestinian revolution, throughout the history of the conflict. You know, at some point of their revolution, they realized that they could become billionaires and get a global status, because who really would care about the president or the prime minister of a country in the Middle East, or let's say a Palestine? Who would care about them? But as rev revolutionary leaders, they got status, they got power, they got lots of money, and they forgot why they started. And the people are just fuel. The children, how many, like in Gaza, in the past few wars, let's say the last one, the Hamas claimed that 1,000 children died. You know how much Hamas got money in return for the children death close to one billion dollars this is one million dollars a head okay and the more they exaggerate the statistics the more the the international community give them money this is their game they want the children to die you think somebody like Sinwar did not realize that israel is going to, co to come to gaza strong he knew he wanted the civilian casualty this is why he's putting booby traps all over the Gaza Strip, so the children can die. And when the children die, he gets money in return. This is how the international community been trying to silence the Hamas and the Palestinian revolution intimidation by paying them off. And the more you give them money, the more violent they become. They started 20 years ago, suicide bombing attacks. Today they're committing a genocide on October 7, and they are using the Gazans as human shields. And instead of understanding the game and cutting the aid 
don't give them more money what we are doing we're just going around like idiots saying free free palestine thanks for watching drop a comment below don't forget to like share and hit subscribe to stay updated with our latest content until next time stay informed and inspired this is Dajabnik signing off.